So in part five, we're going to send the vehicles up a steep hill. They can't do it at a crawl, so we're just going to use momentum to get to the top of the hill and see what we can learn from that. This is the fifth video in the off-road comparison series. Have a look at the previous ones as they explain a lot about suspension and low-range gearing and various other things you need to know when you're driving a four-wheel drive. So this obstacle was originally intended to be the ground clearance test where we just idle up and keep going until such time as there's no more ground clearance but it's too slippery. You can see the cruiser's not actually had a ground clearance yet but it is spinning all four wheels and what that means is not a question of being able to put power to the ground which is what test traction control lockers, suspension flex etc. It's simply a case of there being insufficient traction and the same sort of thing is happening with the patrol here. Uh, in order to get up the hill. So I'm not really here to test tyres. If you look at that, you see basically all four wheels are spinning. There's just, there's just really no grip. So that's kind of a pointless test for four-wheel drive. It's a good, good test for tyres. Now you can see the Defender having a crack, and what's impressive about the Defender is despite the fact its wheels are never, or front wheels, never on the ground compared to the other vehicles, it still manages to pull through. Again, um, that auto rear locker is helping as well as Land Rover's simply superb electronic systems and in this case the driver is giving it a bit more revs than, than the others so it does manage to get a bit further and if we look from the side view here you can see one of the notable things about it is that that the front axle still works with a lot of other vehicles the back axle does all the work with the defender the front axle does tend to pull it through look at the right hand front wheel now see that's still turning it's still going a lot of other cars because the left wheels in the air would simply have had that one um, immobile but uh, no it's sending torque there now you can see that the car's rolling back a bit we're going to cover why that is a, in a little bit later on now as for the Grenadier, well we ran into a bit of a problem with it before we could even really begin. Uh, it's coming up with a rear dip lock error. Okay, this an anti lock the front. No, won't be, can't lock the front. Come up with a warning and red lights instead of orange. So it's definitely got something going wrong. Now that seemed to be a software electronics problem. The, this Grenadier was running an early software release and I haven't heard of anyone else having this sort of problem and it was fixed after a couple of engine on off cycles but that is why you see the Grenadier running without its lockers sometimes and in fairness to the other cars we uh, reduced their use of lockers as well. So it's having a crack here at the hill as you can see and uh, you can say that the axle flex is much better than the Defender um, and eventually managing to pull itself up but really this hill is not doing what I wanted it to do so time for plan B. So plan B is known as liquor stamp and send it which is the instruction to the drivers was use whatever momentum you need to get to the top of the hill and let's see how we go as far as you're comfortable with it so you can see the defenders giving it quite a bit of effort here to get up now this involves momentum wheel spin um, and it's not about finesse sometimes there's just no traction and you do need momentum to try and avoid those points but uh, sometimes that's all you can do but have a listen to this but you just hesitated just a fraction here and there and that, that's what's the problem do you want to give it one more go, go. Oh, i don't know because uh, i didn't actually hesitate that the thing just seemed to lose a bit of power I'll explain what's happening with the Defender shortly, but for the moment, take a look at the side view. Now here's the LC300, it's got its adaptive terrain system set to rock. It actually chops the throttle on you, even though you're in low range. With, do you have um, rock crawl selected? Yeah, the MTS is on rock. So the centre diff is locked, right? Correct. Okay, try it in mud. In mud. Okay, let's give it a shot in mud mode. Now 
Now the reason the Defender and the 300 struggled a little bit was because the 300 is in the wrong mode and the Defender's electronics um, just restricted throttle control. Now this is fundamentally wrong from an off-road driving perspective, it's great for on-road and to explain a little bit more let's look at this explanation from Bosch of ESC. ESP consists of the following components. A wheel speed sensor on each wheel measures the rotational speed of the wheel. The yaw rate sensor measures the rotation of the vehicle relative to its vertical axis. The steering angle sensor registers the driver's steering input. The control unit uses the sensor signals to calculate when and how it must intervene. The hydraulic unit builds up and reduces the braking pressure in the wheel brakes. When starting off on slippery surfaces, the traction control system prevents the wheels from spinning and the vehicle from braking away to the side. For ESP to be able to react to critical driving situations, the system continuously compares the driver's input to the actual vehicle motion. When an obstacle suddenly appears, the driver swerves to the left. The steering angle sensor communicates the driver input to the ESP control unit. However, the yaw rate sensor signals that the vehicle is understeering, indicating that the vehicle is sliding straight toward the obstacle. Within milliseconds, ESP directly targets the rear left wheel and brakes it. This generates the countering force required to make the vehicle follow the steering input. After swerving out, the driver attempts to keep the vehicle in the middle lane by countersteering. There's a danger of the vehicle oversteering and the rear braking away to the left. In this situation, ESP accurately brakes the front left wheel and generates a torque which stabilizes the vehicle. Now when you're driving off-road you must have complete authority over the throttle because the car will move, take a look at my car going through the ruts there. When that happens you do not want the stability control system to back off the throttle or to break individual wheels. You want to have full throttle control, allow that slip, allow that wheel spin and the car can power through whether that's in mud as you can see at the moment or sand or ice or, or snow or whatever the case may be. You have to rely on your own car control skills for that. Now you still want brake traction control working for your individual wheels but definitely not ESC. Now the way to get rid of ESC is generally put the car into four wheel drive if you've got one of those or lock the centre therefore select the appropriate adaptive terrain mode for example terrain response MTS as we saw in the Toyota. But Land Rover don't generally need to completely disable it. Now a good example of this is when I was driving in Discovery 4 in Morocco. So we are just playing around in the Sahara in sand dunes, having a bit of fun um, photographing etc. And then I decided to try what's called a wall of death. Essentially you drive up a sand dune, but instead of going over the top, as you need near the crest, you turn 180 degrees and come back down. It's a fairly easy manoeuvre to do, it is a lot of fun I find. But the Discovery wouldn't let me do it, because as I was turning pretty much full lock as you can see at this point in the photograph as I started to do that and apply the power the car just chopped the throttle and just refused to give me the power I needed and as a result we came to a halt exactly at the 90 degree mark and we couldn't go any further and that was the ESC or the engine traction control kicking in to stop me doing what I needed to do. Now I was able to get out of that uh, fairly easily by raising the car to extended mode and then carefully manoeuvring out. But the point is, it shouldn't have happened in the first place and you need 100% throttle control when you are in off-road driving situations. So let's see how the patrol and the defender get on again. So you notice that the patrol is doing it relatively easy this time and the reason is that the track has become easier to drive because it is drying out because it hasn't rained for a while and also as the cars come up the track then they are removing some of that slippery surface and just making it easier to drive because there's more traction. Now sometimes the second, third, fourth vehicle up has a harder time than the first vehicle up sometimes it's the other way around it's really dependent and in this sort of real world testing it's impossible to control the conditions exactly from run to run so you kind of have to make interpretations now the patrol's also got an advantage because its wheelbase is a bit longer and you can actually see that um, helping because it's got the front wheels pulling um, it out of ruts where the other cars would have diagonal wheels um, um, pulling out of ruts now here's the grenadier and you see it gets stuck a bit there the grenadier never Never seem to have that throttle restriction problem, which was good, unlike the um, uh, Toyota 
and the defender to try the problem was fixed once it was um, in the correct mode the defender whatever mode it was it always seemed to have that restriction going So now we're going to see the effect of suspension flex keeping all four wheels on the ground or more particularly how poorly the defender does it. So you can see the defender's got one wheel in the air whereas the others do not. Despite that the defender is able to pull itself forwards. The patrol has independent suspension as well yet that pretty much has all four wheels on the ground and the grenadier looks the most stable out of the lot. The LC300 that's really got the shortest wheelbase and I think that's why it's a bit rocked over to the left but nevertheless that's still got both front wheels on the ground. And here again there's a slight wheel lift from the Defender so only three wheels on the ground. Again that's not good for stability or traction but the car manages to pull itself through regardless. The other vehicles well you wouldn't even know there was a rut there. So here's what we learned. First of all, misbehaving modern vehicles can often be fixed by paracycling the engine. Failing that, an OBT, OBD2 scanner can clear the fault um, sometimes, but that should never be used to constantly clear faults. You should fix the underlying problem. I've got a specialist vehicle on OBT2 scanners. And sometimes you just need momentum when traction is low and there's no other line options. And in th that's the case, then you do not want your ESC getting in the way. You want full control over the throttle. Engine traction control should be off, ESC should be off, brake traction control can remain on, giving the driver full control of the car. Now, the way you do that, you've got to select the right mode, and that's really important on modern cars. If you don't, it will make the difference between success and failure. But remember, brake traction control is good on road, it's ESC and engine traction control, which work against you. Let's hope you found that video useful. If you've got any questions or comments please use the comment section and thanks for watching.